busy with work and you know, exercise, healthy eating routines. Uh, it takes up a lot of time, like organizing your shit to do that. Um, and I'm just about to embark on this voyage around Australia of uh, training a whole bunch of people in lots of different regions. So I'm going to Perth on Saturday, then um, Adelaide and Melbourne, and then the week after I will be in Brisbane, then I'll have a holiday in Queensland somewhere, which is super awesome. I'm really looking forward to that. Um, I haven't had a holiday in like two years, so I wasn't sure if I'd be able to make video um, during that time. I might be able to make some, but probably can't upload them. So I thought it'd be good if I tried to do that um, today, do something anyway. Uh, it's such a like beautiful summer spring day of it's just really warm and nice. It's like stunning. So, you know, I thought uh, I would take the opportunity to sit outside with my shirt off. Um, <laughs> you know, I got this message from my mate today, and um, you know, saying how shit it is to be binding in summer. And I thought, you know, it just reminded me like of the bad old days and four years or five years of finding five summers and it was just hell on earth um, and it kind of made me reflect and think uh, how lucky I am to have had the opportunity to have surgery and um, how, how kind of how much you kind of so quickly forget how shit it is and how shit it was and um, it's, it's kind of good to remember what you've been through and to really appreciate so I'm like appreciating <laughs> in the sun um, anyway this I'm gonna combine like two topics today because I feel like they kind of go together anyway which is uh, being outed and then um, uh, 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 seeing people you haven't seen since beginning transition um, because for me, often seeing people I haven't seen since beginning transition can be a opportunity to be outed. <laughs> I wouldn't really call it an opportunity, I guess. Um, but it does definitely, those two things do definitely go in hand, hand in hand. Um, you know, being outed, it just, it sucks. And it doesn't stop sucking, you know. Uh, no, matter how, no matter how many times you are outed, um, no matter in what circumstance, it's always it always makes you feel like a little part of you just dies, you know? Because it's not just um, being outed as trans, but also often the outing can occur because they're, they're, you're being mispronounced or um, someone's referring to you, say, with your old name. And um, so that carries with it all of those, that deep kind of questioning and, um, you know, lack of, like you lose a bit of confidence because you're like, what? Why would this person refer to me uh, as as female, or why do they do they still see me that way? You know, uh, and you kind of rethink like how far you've come in transition, and um, it can it can just lead you to feel really crap, and you know, leave you with that feeling for ages. It can also be incredibly humiliating. Um, it can also be uh, a real yeah, a real like blow to your confidence. Um, you know, I've had it happen in so many different circumstances. I have been, I've been outed at work when I was, I've been introduced uh, using female pronouns when I was about to begin a presentation to a whole group of executives, uh, some of whom did not know that I have ever been female, um, or lived uh, as female. I have also gone on a date with a girl who I did not know, knew that I was, I did not know um, when we were on the date that she already knew that I was trans because she'd been told by someone who I don't even know. Um, and, you know, she always, she knew that before we went on the date, but um, obviously to me that felt very disempowering for someone to already have information on me that I feel is deeply personal from someone that I don't even know. So. Uh, I, you know, I've, um, I've had positive outing experiences as well, for example, with family. Um, my grandfather died last year and my mother gave a beautiful eulogy and in that, I, in, at the funeral I was, I basically saw my entire family who I haven't seen since uh, beginning transition and I was just three weeks out of uh, top surgery at that stage and feeling quite sort of, um, you know, sensitive. And um, I was kind of, yeah, like I was pretty nervous about how it was going to go. And during my, the, during the eulogy that my mother gave, 
uh, when she listed my grandfather's grandchildren, uh, she said, and my son, Billy. And it was just this very awesome way of her um, explaining to, without having to explain, to an entire room full of, you know, estranged family members, essentially, that, um, that you know, that my former name, it's now Billy, and um, this is my son, and having that support, and in a sense, my mom was sort of being like defiant, like, this is how it is, you know, you deal with it, um, because we're cool, and I'm cool with it, and um, this is what we're doing, this is what's happening, and I, and you know, I, I felt like it was really, really awesome, I felt like I could feel her support there, and um, it, you know, I nearly cried, I shed, I shed a tear, um, and I think it, it, it definitely worked well in that sense, because, um, Otherwise, it would have been an awkward day of explaining everything to every individual. Uh, it was a good way of just like kind of going, this is how it is, everyone. And, you know, everyone was, you know, okay. I, I had the odd uh, awkward conversation, but generally speaking, I think what you develop through transition is the ability to deal with those situations better and better as time goes on. Um, and those situations should get less and less as transition goes on as well. Um, as people kind of get... Because, you know, there's this awkward stage often in the first year or six months or whatever of transition where uh, it takes a while for your body to catch up with your mental, emotional um, picture of yourself. So you feel uh, 100% male and yet physically you're still represent you're still um, presenting as androgynous or as female or, and it gets to a point where, you know, what I realized is there was this sort of point where I was, I was still feeling just shamed and humiliated and when people would out me, I would just kind of get quiet and like, you know, um, try and get out of the situation calmly and politely and just exit. And I sort of, you know, through therapy actually have realized that uh, it's, it's really important um, to set boundaries of what's cool and what's not cool for you. And to be quite clear in your head about what those boundaries are so that you can identify like when someone's crossed them and so, you know, um, depending on the situation and how you might respond, like, you know, if, um, if in some situations it's, it's really not appropriate, not necessary, and, you know, far too exhaustive to explain to them, you know, your whole history as a trans man and why it's appropriate for them to use, you know, male pronouns and, you know, how it can be feel humiliating, blah, blah, blah. You can waste a lot of energy on people who just don't matter, basically. Um, all you need to say to them is, that was really inappropriate. Um, it's not cool, you know, so yeah, uh, <coughs> you should be, you know, I'm man, if you can't use the correct pronouns, then, you know, let's, don't hang out, <laughs> I think it depends on the person, like, if it's a good friend or, or, or someone that you want to, you know, develop something with, then it is important to explain to them uh, why, and the kind of backstory of, of why that, that does feel so shit, I think, in dealing with it, it's also good to remember that oftentimes people just use the wrong pronouns and accidentally out you because they um, because they haven't taken the time out to really comprehend and fully process the fact that something has changed. Uh, people are creatures of habit and they kind of do things by rote, a lot of people. Uh, you know, if they've known you, you know, associated a particular pronoun with you for 10 years, then it's, it's, it's more difficult the further entrenched that is in their mind. They associate, you know, the color, it's like associating like, you know, the color green with a tree, like, um, they've associated this particular word with you for so long that it can become, it can be difficult no matter how, how much they believe you to be male and how much, you know, they feel for you and support you. It can sometimes be difficult. Um, for those people, and it has happened with some very close friends of mine, uh, I, you know, who've had difficulty, sometimes it's sort of exacerbated when they're drunk, like they just get drunk and um, forget, or not forget, but they just lax back into the old habit, you know. Uh, I guess they're not being as vigilant when they're drunk, but, um, you know, then I've said to them, like, dude, please, maybe it's good to take five minutes out of your life to just sit down and actually go, you know, think of me and think of me historically and think of the fact that, you know, in a sense, I think they would think of you like, oh, you used to be female, now you're male. But if you kind of suggest to them that 
like before when you knew me and you referred to me with female pronouns, that was wrong. Um, I was male then. Um, and, you know, I was always male. And now I, you know, just physically represent that. So it's, it's, actually, it's actually that we were wrong before and we're right now. The, it's not that we're fibbing now and there's some lie or deception. This, this is the greater truth. Um, and to kind of, for them to, in, in a sense, reimagine history and you as a male in that history. And to really just take fucking time out of their day to process the fact that something's changed and that they need to honor and respect your decision. And that if they can't, that they don't have a place in your life, essentially. Um, I know for some people it can take longer than others, particularly with family and stuff. Um, they can have a very fixed idea of you, you know. I'm um, having grown up and lived in this city my whole life, basically. Um, I think it's really important for me in my process to move to a new city where nobody knows me um, or only a few people know me. And, you know, so I have a, a couple of people that I can confide in uh, regarding stuff uh, on the topic of transition and stuff, but who basically on the whole, like, I can walk around and, and just be me and because I think, you know, during this process of transition I have got rid of so much anxiety to do with my gender, uh, so much anxiety around like using the toilets and being out in the toilet and, and, and like in the bathrooms and all that kind of stuff and, you know, the final frontier in a sense is to get rid of the anxiety that I have about being outed by my friends um, or by people you know, I haven't seen in a while. Like I was, I was, you know, walking down the street the other day and I saw this girl that I went out with in high school. Um, I've wondered what happened to her. Like we dated when I was 18. And I haven't really seen her since I was like in my early 20s. Like I, I just, you know, I was so curious to talk to her that I just like was like, hey, wow, and I you know, said her name. And um, she kind of went, huh? And then like she came over and it's like, she, as soon, when she realized I was me, she like exclaimed at the top of her voice, like with my old name. Um, and, you know, obviously people in the street are just being like, huh, that name doesn't fit that person. But, um, you know, I just, you know, I just calmly was like, eh, actually, I've changed my name to Billy. And, you know, she could tell, like, as soon as I talked to her, and, you know, I got a deep voice, I look pretty different. Um, and uh, I think, you know, she was like, right, right, oh, cool. And she was like, hey, nice to meet you, Billy. And I think that's one of the key things I've discovered is, is, is if someone is offensive or in a rude, like if they're accidentally outing you uh, in a rude way, then it's really good to be clear about your boundaries and be confident in yourself and just be like, don't need this. Um, but it's also cool in another way to be like, to just be able to go really good to be positive, especially if you see people we haven't seen in a while because they're just sitting there, they're going to be judging you. They're going to be like, you know, oh, wow, did you do the right thing? Is this, like, the right decision for this guy? Like, oh, my God, what has he done? He's become a man. And, oh, what a freak. He's, oh, he's lost his mind. And, you know, if you're just like, I am freaking awesome, and, hey, it's really great to see you, um, and you, like, let him in, and you, like, encourage them, you know, and you encourage them to be supportive. And I think that's the other thing is, like, when I first told my friends, I was like, I did this thing where I was like, you know, you're so important to me, um, and I need allies and, you know, I want you to be there so that in my absence, if people are using the incorrect pronouns, you as my good friend will correct them so that you've got like these key allies around the place who will like um, correct other people in your absence and who'll be your supporters. And I think if you give people that sense of like, you can help someone, you can do something good, you can be a better person then actually, generally speaking, most people really want to that and they like the idea of like, you know, being like behind something and for someone and positive and helping someone. Um, so you can like, you know, uh, like allow them to sort of help your transition in that way. Like I'm going through this really intense thing. You're my good friend. What can you do for me? You can support me and you can, when people say, whoa, what did you do? You can be like, hey, it's awesome and be really positive. Uh, I think that helps. So I hope I've like... Um, you know, it helps you guys out there, any of you who are struggling with being out and come up with some ways to deal with it. Um, so I think be assured that your confidence will grow and that the instances of being out and do dissipate over time because people just forget and one day it will occur that they'll be like, whoa, it's so weird to even think of you as ever having lived as female. Um, 
So, you know, best of luck to everyone and especially those guys going through that awkward, awkward stage. Um, I feel you. I know how it sucks. <laughs> All right, peace.